Okay, it's a little bit after two. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Better Business Partnership webinar today, focusing on from better business to responsible business. My name is Amanda Choi, and first I would like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land from which I come to you, which is the Camaragal people from the Eora Nation. Uh, and I also pay my respects to the elders past and present and extend my respects to any Aboriginal people present today. I'm the coordinator of the Better Business Partnership Program, which is a business sustainability program funded by three local councils on Sydney's North Shore, Karingai, North Sydney and Willoughby. Um, and um, I'll just tell you a little bit about what BBP does. We are a free program available to local businesses in those areas and we provide um, support and advice in relation to nine areas of sustainability that are relevant to businesses across the environmental aspects, water, energy, waste, um, reducing single-use plastic, community and staff engagement, as well as sustainable transport, sustainable purchasing and business health, which looks at economic and financial uh, health. Today, um, we want to really focus on um, taking a business, while the, B the BBP program is a positive encouragement program and we work with businesses wherever they are on their sustainability journey um, and encourage them to take small steps or big steps to improve their sustainability in any of those areas. But there are, we know, businesses that really want to make um, a bigger positive impact, not only um, for, their, um, for their staff and their customers, but on the environment um, and really using business as a force for good. So today um, I'm really uh, happy to be joined by a fantastic panel um, as we uh, take a bit of a deep dive into um, becoming a certified B Corp. So I've got um, Lauren Diggle from B, um, from B Lab Australia, uh, two businesses um, in our BBP program who have recently become um, B Corps. So Sasha from Tombag and Nicole from Sessions Hairdressing. Um, and we also have um, someone who you might be familiar with, Victoria Edgehill, who actually previously worked at BBP um, for the Willoughby, um, in the Willoughby program. Uh, and she's going to be, um, explaining to us what a responsible business platform looks like. Um, so today we're going to um, just take a little step back. So it'll only take a couple of minutes. I just want to explain sort of the context around CSR, ESG, what's all these like acronyms. Um, and then we will have a bit of a, um, a deep dive into B Corp and talk to our panelists and um, some tips and tools along the way. So corporate social responsibility or CSR, something that we uh, talk to our um, businesses about um, in the support that BBP gives to our businesses. It is the idea that a business has a responsibility to um, contribute positively to society as well as pursue its profit-making activities. Um, in the past, it's um, usually sort of hived off in, in, in companies as a sort of a separate stream. It might be you know, charitable giving or corporate volunteering, um, helping community groups in, in the local area. Um, and it's often reported similarly like compliance and governance. Um, and that, that's been going on pretty much all through the 20th century. It really took off in the mid-2000s, mid, um, um, 1900s. Um, I get my, my centuries mixed up. Um, and then in, in, in this um, century, the, the 2000s, we had the rise of ESG, which is, stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. And um, this first came about in the early 2000s and it came out of a, a UN report called Who, Who Hairs Wins? So it's starting to um, uh, provide a bit more of a quantitative, quantitative measure of sustainability and um, it's, it's known to really improve the valuation of a business and, and you'll find that all of the, the listed public companies, listed companies all provide very detailed ESG reporting and they use a variety of quite complicated reporting standards that I won't go into, but you know, you might've heard of 
the acronym GRI, which stands for Global Reporting Initiative. Um, there's a couple more, SASB. I think these are more probably in the US, but Sustainability Accounting Standards, uh, Board Standards. So um, we're not gonna go into that today, um, but ESG, what it looks um, at around in environmental, social and governance. You can see that in the environmental um, section, it looks at how a company safeguards the environment, uh, corporate policies around climate change or decarbonisation, if there are any waste or um, polluting activities that the company is involved in, how they manage that, um, how, they, how they protect um, land. In the social aspect, you've got your health and safety and well-being, relationships with employees and customers and suppliers and the communities uh, within um, which the company operates. And governance is really around transparency, leadership, um, executive pay, audits, internal controls, etc. So um, a very broad spectrum really infiltrates every section of a business's operations. So there are a plethora of certifications out there. Um, I've put some up here that are relevant in the Australian environment. There's um, a million more in the absence of sort of a government type of certification. We have um, a, a plethora of um, private ones, B Corp um, being the top one. The GECA is the um, Good Environmental Choice of Australia, and that is specifically for products. Um, and if you go onto the Gecko website, there's a lot of products relating to um, building materials and, you know, um, um, design and, um, and architects use it to, um, you know, make sure that the designs and the buildings that um, they build are um, with sustainable products. Uh, Climate Active was around being carbon neutral. Um, Green Star for buildings, fair trade, you know, um, to make sure that the supply chain is fair and ethical. Um, and ISO 14001, which is a standard, but there is certification available and quite a lot of big companies um, get involved in that. But what today, what we want to do is um, look at um, B Corp, a globally recognised, oh, it doesn't work. There you go, Lauren. <laughs> um, a globally recognised certification for businesses that really want to go that extra mile um, and measure a company's entire environmental and social impact. So they're required to meet really high standards of verified performance and accountability and transparency. And I am going to hand over to Lauren um, to give us the full picture. So I'll stop sharing, Lauren, if you want to uh, jump in. Thanks, Amanda. Wonderful. Let me see if I can get the tech tech working here. Lovely. And we'll share my screen. All righty. Let's go full screen there. Can everyone see my screen up there? Absolutely. Beautiful. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. It's lovely to be with you all here today to talk about B Corp certification and a bunch of other certifications and doing doing better business, I guess. Um, I thought I would sort of start off by introducing myself um, with a little bit about me. I am Lauren. I'm the certification manager and evaluation analyst at B Lab Australia in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, I started off as an intern in 2018 and I've been in various roles in the organization ever since. In my current certification manager role, I work mostly with aspiring B Corps who are trying to navigate their certification journey. And in my role as an evaluation analyst, I complete what we call sort of an, an initial assessment check for all of the companies in Australia and New Zealand who submit their assessment to become a B Corp. So it's sort of just making sure that the assessment looks good. Um, it's reflective of their, of their business before we send it off to one of our verification analysts um, off in the US from the US team. So I thought I would start off with who is B Lab. So B Lab are the not for profit behind B Corp certification. And um, B Corp certification started in the US in 2006. So B Lab was founded by three friends who shared a vision to make business as a force for good. 
the founders of B-Lab believed that the current economic system was fundamentally flawed. So companies were prioritizing profits and money was made to maximize shareholder value. So they created the B Corp movement because they really wanted to sort of shift the culture of business and kind of redefine what it meant to be, I guess, successful in business. So our global vision is for an inclusive, equitable and regenerative economic system for all people and the planet. And this slide here is, I guess, a bit of what um, Amanda was saying before um, about the evolution of business. Sort of we've gone from that 20th century shareholder capitalism view to now um, stakeholder capitalism and the B Corp movement really embodies this stakeholder capitalism where it's all about sort of doing better business for people in the planet and really moving away from a system that has traditionally prioritized profit above everything else that they do. And I thought this was just a good slide to sort of highlight that people are demanding better from businesses. So these are two stats from the 2020 Edelman, Edelman Trust Barometer. So we've got 80% of global consumers agree that businesses must play a role in addressing societal, societal issues. And 86% of employees believe that it's important for their own employer, um, that they are responsible to society and the environment. So I guess even if as a business, um, you haven't yet connected with the idea of having a positive impact whilst you generate profits, customers and staff are now actually expecting this of the businesses um, that they're working with. This slide here is really just to highlight the growth of the B Corp movement on a global scale and also to highlight our regional growth, which we're super proud of. So at the moment, globally, we've got 5,814 B Corps across 85 different countries um, with 158 different industries. So in our region, we have 490 B Corps with around just over 400 in Australia and around 80 or something in New Zealand, which is great. We've experienced quite rapid growth since COVID um, when more businesses are, I guess, looking to become a certified B Corp. And at the moment, we've got around 220 companies who have submitted their assessment, but they're not actually yet certified. So they're somewhere in the review process, um, which is super exciting and hopefully we'll have them certify very soon. <laughs> Um, this is a bit of a slide just sort of highlighting the community in our region. You may see some B Corps on this slide, but really just highlighting the um, different types of industries that we have. So technology, textiles, energy, education, food, finance, the community is very diverse and continuing to expand, which is super exciting. Um, and I guess I also wanted to sort of point out that the B Corp movement in our region really started off with mostly SME sized companies. And these were sort of the early adopters in our region and still to this day are a very important part of growing our movement. I think at the moment, um, SMEs still make up around 80% of our AANZ community. So um, yeah, we really appreciate and have a lot of love for our smaller, smaller companies as well. This slide is just sort of highlighting, I guess, going back to the basics, what is a certified B Corporation? It's a holistic certification for businesses. So it measures the positive impact that a company has on its different stakeholders. So workers, community, customers, and the environment. So on this slide here, it sort of highlights, we've got sort of five key, we call them impact areas. Um, so companies earn points for the positive things that they do across the different impact areas. So for example, if you have an employee handbook, if you have a whistleblowing policy, if you track your energy usage, these are all the types of things that will earn you points on the assessment. Um, and the assessment, it's online, it's free, it's um, a self-assessment. So any company can just sort of jump on, sign up and sort of get started. But I guess um, if you do want to sort of take the next step and become a certified B Corp, so go through that verification process, there are three main requirements. The first one is the performance requirement. So completing the assessment and getting that verified score of at least 80 or more points. And then the second requirement is that legal accountability. So adopting a legal framework to embed purpose and consider all stakeholders. And then the last one is super important around transparency. 
So once you certify as a B Corp, you have what we call a B Corp profile, which lives on our B Corp directory. Um, so Tom Bag and Sessions Hairdressing, they'll both have their own B Corp profile. So you can see a company score, um, that you can see there's five different impact areas, how they've gone in each of the areas, um, which is really great as well. This one here, I won't necessarily go through all the different steps, but this is sort of just like a roadmap to certification in terms of the different um, steps that companies sort of take. We sort of say to companies, the first step you should sort of do is get the initial buy-in from the rest of your team. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, engaging the, the finance people or, you know, the HR people, it's, it's a lot easier if you're do, taking sort of a team approach and if everyone um, is sort of on board from the get-go. And then you sort of, we sort of say, like, complete your assessment, do a first pass, see how you're sort of going, and then sort of work on that improvement stage. I think um, most companies that take the assessment land at around like 50 to 60 points. So it's it's fairly rare for a company to get, um, you know, the 80 points straight away. There's plenty that score below who just have to keep working on improvements. Very normal and very doable. Um, but yeah, every um, B Corp will have a slightly different journey. And I'm sure we'll hear more about that from Sasha and Nicole as well later on. Um, here is just some of the benefits of being a B Corp. Um, it kind of, I was saying to Amanda the other day, it's really interesting. I think number two, so attracting and engaging and I guess retaining talent has been something that um, has sort of kept cup, popping up for me and the sort of aspiring B Corps that I've been working with, particularly off the back of COVID. I feel like this is a really strong one for a lot of, um, I guess, the reason behind why a lot of companies are coming to us and wanting to certify. Um, you know, people want to work with companies who share similar values. COVID has very much shown us that companies who take care of their employees often retain this talent for longer. Um, so I feel like at the moment, number two is a very big one um, for our region anyway, which is exciting. And then in this slide here, and I'll, um, give Amanda a copy of the slides for you all to have a look at. But these, these are just some tips for smaller sort of businesses, if any of you on the um, webinar today, considering becoming a B Corp, just some tips around how to sort of approach it. Um, you know, a lot of people sort of say that the assessment was just good to sort of lay the foundations for a business. Um, it just helps you kind of identify the things that you are doing, some of the gaps that you might have. And it sort of helps you map that sort of improvement plan. We've got a really great new resource toolkit, which I've linked here, um, which has a whole bunch of sort of templates and best practice policies and um, those types of things, which could be really useful for anyone who's interested as well. And finally, just another sort of resource type slide, which again, you'll get a copy of this, but three things that you can um, I guess, engage with. We've got a free online short course. It takes about 40 minutes. It's sort of like an at your own pace um, type course, which sort of tells you about B Corp, our community, um, a bit about the benefits. We've got our B Corp workshops, which are run um, both in person and online as well. And we also have B consultants who are sort of our trained up consultants. Um, we train them up to sort of help them um, support businesses on how to navigate their B Corp journey as well. So hopefully that's helpful for those of you who are maybe considering or at least curious about B Corp certification. And that's that's pretty much me. And I know we've got a, a big chunk of time for questions at the end as well, Amanda. So I might pass it back to you for now. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everyone. I'm muted. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren, for that um, for that comprehensive view. Um, I've actually started that online course, the Torrens. Oh, great! Oh, yeah, yeah, the Torrens one. Yeah, it's really, really good. So it doesn't take very long. Um, I'd encourage everyone. Um, so what we'll do is we'll actually send a video um, along with the recording um, of this to everyone who registered. There will be links to um, the packs that Lauren um, and Victoria are going to take you through, as well as um, links to all of the resources. So um, yeah, plenty to get your teeth sunk into. Um, so we will come back for questions. And I'll just, um, 
I forgot to tell everyone, please put your questions in the Q&A in the bottom um, of the Zoom panel and we will get to them um, after the presentations. But uh, I actually have a stack of them just from listening to you, Lauren. And I know that, um, you know, if you think of a question, no doubt like there are other people that have the same question. So please ask away so that we can um, really, really get all of the details out. But I'm going to um, switch now to um, Nicole and Sasha um, and, and ask um, maybe Nicole first, what, what motivated you to become a B Corp in the first place? Um, when I'm asked this question, I always have such a simple answer, but I'll try and expand it for you a little. Um, I think for me, sustainability unknowingly was always a part of my business vision. Um, probably for the best part of 10 years, I've been slowly implementing sustainable changes. Um, the biggest influence or inspiration for me was when I started using Davines, um hair products. They're a certified B Corp, an Italian hair care company, and they've been certified since 2012, I think. And once I saw the good they were doing in the world, I really felt so inspired to be a part of that change. Um, then when I realized there was only four hair salons globally before sessions that were certified, I thought, what, well, I have to do something. Um, so my answer is often, why not? Why wouldn't I? And it's still kind of my basic answer. Um, I think for me, it's more a purpose driven thing. I really care about people and I love nature and I love animals. So for me, it was a no brainer. Oh, that's great. So it's it's great to hear that you were actually influenced by another company, and um and that and that gave you the inspiration to to do that. And you know I'm hoping that you know today we'll actually inspire a lot more BBP businesses. I know that there are actually several on the journey. So um and there are actually others that are already B Corp. So um it's you know it's a great alignment and and for us thinking well it is like another step you know from better business that start. Um, and then to become a B Corp. So um, I, I know, so I didn't mention at the beginning, but um, Nicole's business um, sessions was actually the, the winner of the Better Business of the Year Award last year. So um, that um, that status having the B Corp was, was definitely um, um, a, a distinguishing factor. So we'll get to the benefits anyway. Sasha, how about you with Tombag? Tell us what Tombag is and, and, and why um, you became a B Corp. Uh, sure. First of all, thanks for having me here. Um, um, Tombeck is a social enterprise uh, and uh, we uh, created the world's first reusable garbage bags that is fully uh, circular, uh, meaning that it is created out of waste and uh, it can be fully upcycled at the end of its life. Uh, so uh, the purpose uh, of our business is to replace uh, single-use bin liners, uh, mainly plastic, but also compostable and biodegradable that are obviously single-use and uh, they're getting uh, into landfill uh, after just one use. Um, so uh, we uh, started our business, um, and by we, I mean me and my husband. There are only two people uh, in Tombak. Uh, it's a family-run social enterprise. Uh, we started Tombak uh, having same values that B Corp, B Lab uh, stands for. Uh, it's care for the environment uh, mainly, um, and care for the community and transparency. Uh, so. Um, you know, for us, it was uh, kind of a logical step, a uh, logical thing to do to get a B Corp certification uh, just because uh, of who we, who we are and how we are doing our business. Uh, it was just a um, no brainer as well. Okay, um, so I have um, another question just on that, that long sort of um, different steps. How, how did you find the process? Like, was it a lengthy process? Did it take you a long time? Or, you know, were there any sort of shortcuts? Um, who wants to go first? Sasha, do you want to keep going? 
Uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, it was definitely a long process and uh, to be honest in the beginning because it was um, uh, <laughs> all very overwhelming or seemed to be overwhelming at first, you know, be, uh, be impact assessments. Um, we were thinking to hire uh, consultants. Uh, but then, uh, because we had an inspiration as a big corp replated, uh, we were together at the um, um, Hatch Accelerator in 2020. Um, so we, we we know this business quite well, and uh, she just did it. Uh, we knew from her that she just did it without any consultants at all, uh, and it inspired us to just uh, give it a try, and uh, we we did it. <laughs> we did it without any help. Uh, and I mean, yeah, it was a long process and it required preparation, definitely. Um, but uh, as I said, because uh, we already uh, did many things uh, for the environment and did the right things, we uh, were always aspiring for the full transparency in our relationships with our customers. Uh, so uh, many things were easy, uh, but then again, obviously, like not all things we had. So like there were uh, uh, some times that we needed for preparation, that's for sure. Mm. What was the name of that um, company that went before you? Was it? Yeah, Replated. It's also Sydney-based. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yes, um, we had Naomi on um, a previous webinar, actually. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, earlier in the year. Um, now, Nick, I know you're well appraised of the process. So how, how did you find it? Yeah, I um, the same. Long, um, at times overwhelming I mean for me my skill set I am a hairdresser 19 years and I've owned my salon for 13 so my skill set is to I talk and I love talking um, and I work with my hands so to sit in front of a laptop and answer I think it's around 300 questions I'm not sure um, and a lot of the language is beyond me um, so I did find it quite bewildering at times, the bee impact assessment. Um, I did actually, through my uh, special skill of human connection, I did actually speak to a client, many clients about this, but one put me in touch with um, someone who was aiming to be a bee consultant, um, Michelle. And honestly, she was worth her weight in gold. Um, it was so simple for me. She did a lot of the um, implementation, the documents. I got to, you know, do what I do best, inspire my team, um, get excited about solving problems. But she did all the really, according to me, boring stuff. Um, and it definitely made the process a lot easier. One of the things that I think is important to highlight about the process um, from, from my perspective is that the the view that you get doing the bee impact assessment, it's such a, a third party perspective that you really get to see the impact you're having on the environment and your community around you and inside your business. So it's a really good um, way to actually pull yourself out because as a small business owner, you're often working on the day to day as well. And it's very hard to see from the outside what you're doing and are you driving in the right direction? At least it was for me. So that I think is an important thing to highlight about the certification. It, you know, the benefits far outweighed the challenges for me. Okay. And so um, can you articulate some of those, some of those benefits that have flowed past um, certification? Uh, benefits that have flowed past certification. Well, that that one, being able to separate myself from the business, really, really important. And I hadn't been able to do that. I think we certified in 2020. So that was pretty amazing. Um, it's allowed me to drive forward um, and keep implementing things with the, the goal to recertify. And our recertification is next year. Um, allowing me to plan how the business will change and grow for an even greater positive and social environmental impact. Um, it, other benefits, I guess, um, it, you know, greater team engagement, customer engagement, social media engagement. Um, whenever we post something about sustainability, it's really high. 
Um, the engagement's really high. And I think most of all, my personal job satisfaction, um, I'm not motivated by money. Uh, that makes me weird, I'm sure. But I think what B Corp did is it joined the dots for me. And I, I heard Sasha say that too, is that they were already, you know, their values were already B, B Corp's values. Um, so implementing it and going through the process really helped me to knuckle down on my why and helped me to kind of understand where I was going. Um, and now I'm even creating a new business of sustainability consulting, um, which launches next year. So it's really driven me forward um, in where I'm going, as well as help my business grow. So, yeah. Oh, wow, that's really exciting. <laughs> we'll have to um, keep tabs on that one as that develops. Yeah. How fantastic. Yeah. And what about you, Sasha, with Tom Bag? How, um, how have you found any benefits that have uh, flowed from since certification? I think one of the main benefits is trust because we are uh, working not only with individual uh, consumers but also with businesses uh, and obviously everybody knows B Corp, everybody knows what it means to <laughs> go get certification. Um, so it's definitely that we are getting more trust from our uh, um, uh, clients, uh, individual consumers and businesses alike. Um, and then uh, in terms of goal setting, obviously we would be uh, setting goals without uh, B Corp certification, but uh, it just gives us uh, structure, uh, if you know what I mean, because uh, every three years you have to get your uh, uh, certification again, uh, get recertified, and um, I mean, uh, you are staying within certain deadlines and uh, you are able to plan better um if you know what i mean and if it makes sense um so i guess that's it and more transparency yeah more trust hmm. yeah it sounds like a very good organizational structure for uh, particularly for a small business where you don't have a mm. lot of okay um well i'm gonna um keep my questions for the end but um i'd like to introduce um vic who as i said before well known to the bbp um network so Thanks for joining us, uh, Victoria. And um, uh, this um, platform, um, Relievables, that um, Victoria has actually um, been awarded um, quite a few um, startup awards um, for, this, for, for this innovative platform, which she's going to explain to us. Um, I can't even begin to explain it. I've seen it. It's amazing. But particularly for um, you know, small and medium businesses that, as you've heard, so much documentation reporting um, and if you've ever been disorganized, you know, like me, where is everything? Oh, I have to, you know, find something. I have to like pull it out and you don't know where it is. It's in another email or someone's left the organization. Well, Vic's got the answer. So um, Vic, I'll hand over to you. Do you want to share your screen and take yeah. us through it? Yeah, thanks, Amanda. And hey, everyone. Yeah, so as Amanda said, I um, I used to work at BBP. I've had a long history in terms of working in sustainability. When I left my last full-time job in technology, I started a, a fashion business called Citizen of the Planet, and it's a circular fashion business that's aiming to reduce um, fast fashion waste. And when I was doing that, even with a background of uh, sustainability and ESG, I found it really complex to pull everything together to create the impact and the reporting and the sustainability. And so the creation of Relatables came out of my own need as a business of, of needing a place or a central repository to keep everything together that was required in terms of um, progressing your social and environmental journey. Uh, and that's, yeah, Relatable. So essentially, is, can everyone see that? Am I? Um, canvas? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Can you see me? Yeah, <laughs> you can see that. Nice. Yep. All right, perfect. Um, so essentially, Relievables is an ESG intelligence platform that helps you manage everything in the one place that you need to do around social and environmental impact. So if you think about as a small business, most of you would have, or if not all of you would have a financial management software like Xero that helps you pay invoices, pay your employees, um, manage your tax, all of that kind of stuff. 
you would never imagine not having a system like that to help manage all of those things. Essentially, Relievables does that for everything in your ESG or sustainability space. So everything that you're trying to do, in term, including managing certifications like B Corp, setting your goals and you're tracking your metrics and also creating um, impact reporting on a, on a yearly basis. So as Lauren said, and, you know, every organisation knows that they have to improve their impact and they're, they're being their increasing pressure is being put on them from customers, investors, employees to increase their ESG performance. But what does actually taking action look like? There's a whole raft of things that you have to do as a business. So the first thing that you usually do is create a, or conduct a baseline. So using things like the B Corp BIA assessment is amazing to be able to work out where you are and what you need to improve. Then there's that whole improvement or action improvement process where if you're looking for B Corp certification, you might start at 50 points and you know that there's a delta to get to 80. So finding or identifying actions to actually improve that. Then the next part might be certification. So a lot of the businesses might be going through B Corp, which is an amazing holistic certification. You also might look at uh, what I call issue specific certification. So fair trade, GECA, climate active, that kind of thing. And as you start collecting all these different certifications, it gets more and more complex to manage all of the metrics and all of the actions that you're trying to do. Um, the next thing that you need to do as part of that is measure or keep on top of what you're trying to what you're trying to improve. So measuring your community hours that you're volunteering, measuring your carbon emissions, measuring you know all of your your, your governance, all of those metrics that you might go through and answer in the B Corp certification. You need to be kind of measuring those on an ongoing basis. Um, and the last thing is is reporting and creating social media tiles, like Nicole said, or creating annual impact reports. So there's a whole bunch of things that you need to do to improve your business and it gets quite complex. So for small businesses, a lot of the problems that come out of that is they're not really sure where to start. You don't have much time. A lot of the processes are Excel spreadsheets, um, manual or duplications. There's a lot of standards. There's a lot of certifications or frameworks um, that you need to be working into. There's lots of systems, our processes with no central source of truth for that data. And you need, you're needing to report on that stuff and make, make really accurate claims so that you don't get, you know, um, blamed for greenwashing and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of, a lot of stress or anxiety around that kind of thing for small businesses. And it just gets really complex, really confusing and really time consuming for a lot of businesses that don't have much time. So we thought, wouldn't it be great to have a platform that integrates all of these different business systems within the one place and communicates to all of these different types of stages um, to help you manage your impact, measure it and communicate it, which is why we created the platform. So within that, you can manage a lot of your certifications like B Corp, BBP um, actions, you could input them in there, Path Zero, Climate Active, and you can identify actions for improvement, not just through a certification process, but through embedding it into your business so that when you do go for to certify, you can go back to this platform and, and pull out what you need to. It also can, uh, connects to all of your impact data sources. So you can connect everything that you need to report on in that one place and monitor the, the progress. So if someone asks you, what are your carbon emissions? You can go and find it in the platform. How many hours did you volunteer as a business last year? You can go and find it in the platform because it's all able to be tracked. And then that gives you a really uh, a great benefit of being able to generate, generate customizable reports and dashboards to communicate to different stakeholders. Um, we also have a lot of design plugins. So we've got a Canva plugin so that you can create impact templates and social media tiles and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to give one last use case of how we help um, B Corp. So we actually, uh, you're able to input your BIA scores into the platform and do the improvement process um, with mapped with how many points you get for each action. So if you're say get 50 points for BIA, but you need to meet 80, you can allocate out all of those actions to your teammates. And then when they're completed, you're getting a running score of where you're up to so that you know when to submit. So you can track the impact improvement process. You can also capture and track any of the metrics that you need to report on for B Corp um, within the platform. 
And then as part of B Corp, um, Lauren will prob probably be able to answer this, but I know there's a expectation or requirement to do impact reporting as part of your um, commitment to be B Corp certified. So this allows you to create those annual impact reports as well, as well as doing the recertification process, looking at how you've improved from the last three years because you've all got all of those metrics within the one place. So that's one um, really small use case of how you might use the platform. Uh, but there's a lot, lot of other ways that you can use that, a lot of other certifications as well in there. Um, lastly, we are a social enterprise. So for every paid client that we have, we provide scholarships to underrepresented businesses, social enterprises who are solving social and environmental issues. Um, so we're also, we won, recently won a social enterprise award uh, for that work as well. And we're also in, in uh, knee deep in the B Corp certification process ourselves, both for Relievables and for my initial uh, fashion business, Citizen of the Planet. Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> oh wow, thanks, Vic. That's amazing. Um, it's really great to see it come. I know we've been talking about it. For, well, I've been talking to you about it for years, so it's really great to see it um, actually in um, in production and um, and being used. So let's have a look at. Our, oh, we don't have any questions. If you have any questions, please pop them in the Q and A. Um, but I have um, I have a couple, and um, can you? You have um, a couple, um, so let me see. I wanted to ask, um, I've got a couple here, of either Nicole or Sasha. So, you know, in terms of like going through the process, did you find that you had to actually change anything significantly in your business in order to get a score or to be able to, you know, to get the certification? And uh, for me, uh, for us, not really. Uh, I think when we did the assessment for the first time, at first and only, I think we uh, got to 110 points, but then we got a little bit less. I think currently we are, or like our current store score is uh, 106 something. Uh, so, I mean, not really for us. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, we didn't have to necessarily change anything that we were doing, but there was just some implementation of probably more documents. Um, I took on my business at 24. So for me, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I, um, a lot of the stuff was up here and not written down. So it was more documentation. Um, we did have to go back again and provide documentation and do a do a few more things to reach 80 I think we got to 81 or 80.7 um so we just scraped in but also our the category we were in uh for hairdressing which I hope to drive change for Lauren <laughs> is we were in the uh the highest polluters so same category as manufacturers of products um and when I've done all of our um, you know, we offset all of our carbon and stuff like that and calculating our emissions, it's so minimal. Um, so maybe that's for another another day, but yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, no, I was just really thinking to myself, you know, what is the what is the baseline, you know, for an ordinary business? Like, do they have to sort of really change their practices? But um, I suppose both of you, you know, starting from a very sustainable philosophy to, to begin with, um, wouldn't wouldn't need to make um, significant changes. So I have a question here. Um, I'll read it out. So um, it's: Do you think it would be beneficial for business to have a B Corp mentor mentor to help them through the process, or best to just have uh, to have enough people internally to help? Both, depending on the size of the business. For me, I'm the I'm the sole owner, director, manager. Um, I have a very small salon, so I think for me, um, having, for lack of a better description, a, a coach or a personal trainer, someone to keep me accountable, that's that's really helpful. 
Uh, I can also say that the businesses that utilize on the Relievables platform, the B Corp journey, sometimes they'll start doing the BAA and then realize, wait, I've got all these questions about, you know, granular things of what does this mean? So then we connect them with B Corp consultants who also use the platform. And so there's always questions about, you know, what does that particular wording in that question mean? And rather than just guessing and waiting for the standards analyst to say, oh, you know, you didn't meet that, sometimes it's good to get those questions answered. And also, as um, Nicole was saying, if you need templates or things like that to actually systemize into your business, it's really good to have someone helping in those areas that you're not quite sure about. So yeah, you, it, it's great to have that assistance, depending, especially if you don't have someone internally that is kind of got the, the understanding of that process. Uh, and if I can add, um, I think mentor uh, can be definitely helpful, but uh, in our journey, uh, I found helpful um, our evaluation analyst as well, uh, because uh, we did have some questions and it was possible to ask uh, our analysts during the actual uh, process, and I found it really helpful. Uh, yeah, so I suppose that's great. You know, I mean, B Lab and um, B Core have extensive um, support resources and, and staff, which is um, which is another benefit of of being part of that that network. Um, so I'm not sure whether we have another question, but um, one that occurred to me, Lauren, I haven't been through the process, um, but in the different impact areas, um, and there's a requirement of a, at least 80 out of 250 plus points, but are those points like evenly spread across those, was it five areas or can you sort of get heavily weighted in one and, you know, yes. lower in another? Great question. Um, so at the moment, I think governance and customers have less questions. So the, the environment community and workers questions, there's more of, and customers is a smaller part and government governance is again, a smaller part, but that's probably one of the things that is quite tricky with the way that B Corp certification is set up at the moment with our current standards is that some companies do really well in the environment section, but they might not do as well in the community section. And that's kind of where like your recertification journey comes into play. Like, you know, you'll certify, you'll get a score, you'll get like a score in the different five areas. And so that's sort of like the goal of your recertification is to think, okay, maybe we didn't do as well in workers this time round, but like, okay, let's use the next three years to put some things in place so that we can boost up our score in the workers section because there's a whole bunch of like opportunities there um but i think you've touched on a like super good point and our standards at the moment are undergoing like a complete sort of revamp um so i think ever since b corp certification started the whole premise has been it's always been the five impact areas it's always been you've got to reach 80 points in order to certify but at the moment, there's a whole bunch of work that's been, do been done at our global level. And we've actually just launched um, the public consultation period, which is, I guess, asking B Corps, aspiring B Corps, anyone, governments, people who are interested in the area to review um, B Lab or B Corps draft requirements for what the standards are going to look like in, I think they're launching in 2024. Um, and it looks very different to what the certification looks like now. So instead of having the five impact areas, there's 10 kind of, we're calling them like impact topics. And instead of sort of companies only being able to sort of do, you know, you've basically got to sort of be doing good across all 10 to some extent. And it's kind of like, I think like one of them is like corporate purpose, which sort of touches on a lot of the governance things. And then within corporate purpose, there's minimum requirements and there's almost like a scale from, I think, one to five. And it's like the company has not met the requirement. The company is like, you know, partially there. The company has met the requirement. The company is excelling on the requirement. So it looks quite different. And what I'll do is I'll pop in the chat um, the link because it would be amazing if anyone who's interested to have a look and read the requirements there's like a survey um, that you can take to give us feedback 
Um, there's a really great, I think there's like a global, a, a global team hosting a webinar about it and everything. So it's a really great chance to sort of reshape the standards and what things look like because um, yeah, they're going to change because I feel like they, they, def they definitely need to change with things sort of changing in our society. Um, we need the standards yeah. to reflect that. So let me hunt down the link and I'll pop it in the chat for us all. Okay, well, I've got another question uh, for you. So um, yes, yeah, go for you, it. Before you do that. So um, yeah. Heather has um, asked, uh, do a lot of businesses who share the passion for sustainability have difficulty in funding these processes and finding the time? Um, and are there options available to small and medium businesses who need support in this, especially since the impact of COVID? Yeah, really great question. Um, I think, yeah, funding is a really interesting one. Um, and at the moment, our, I guess the, free, the, the tool is free to take. The costs sort of start when you like submit your assessment and you actually want to certify as a B Corp. So plenty of businesses out there just use the tool because it's free and it's there and they just want to identify gaps in their business to improve type thing. Um, and I guess for the companies who want to take it that step further, um, that's where the costs are involved. So I think the um, when you submit your assessment, there's like a submission fee. I think it's $250 Australian off the top of my head. And then your annual certification fee is based on your annual revenue. Um, so I would sort of say to businesses like, I, I say, say to companies, like, don't put too much pressure on yourself to certify straight away, particularly if, you know, financial means is like a hurdle for you at the moment. Um, and having said that, we thought we were going to lose quite a lot of businesses during COVID. I think we lost a couple just because the nature and probably the smaller businesses were the ones that were obviously impacted the most. But having said that, you can always decertify and we've had a couple of businesses come back and recertify so if you know for some reason you've had a really tough couple of years um, you know there's always sort of ways that we can try and extend your recertification period and we're always happy to have those types of conversations but sometimes like it's it's very okay to you know say look right now we just can't afford it so we're going to let the certification go for a couple of years and revisit um, you know, when we feel like we're in a better place to do so. Um, so I'm not sure if that quite answers the question, but hopefully that gives some context. I think and I confirm, Lauren, if, if there's any, sorry to, to butt in, I just want to check, is there a time limit? You know, is it two years and you've got to start again or it doesn't matter? No, no, as in if you decertify, do you have to come, is there a time limit to come back? Well, that, that and also mean? like if you start the process and then you're, you know, like three years, four years down the track, you go, oh, I want to keep going. You don't have to start. It's not like a, you know, you have to do it within a certain period. No. So as in, so if you're like a business who hasn't yet certified, you're on the journey, you've submitted, there's also the chance you can like pause your assessment if you know that something's come up and, you know, maybe it was, we had a couple of companies pause because of the effects of COVID. So that's also a um, option. But if a company chooses to decertify because they, um, you know, feel like it's not financially viable, they can come back whenever. They could come back in six months' time. They could come back in four years' time. They just have to go through the process again. And I would just add the only only caveat there is if you had started answering the questions for a particular financial year, and then you come mm. back with another one, and you want to measure and it's a new financial year, you would answer the questions based on that last completed financial year. So that would be the only change, yeah. Okay, we're running out of time. I've got one more question. Um, how do you account for the very different kinds of businesses uh, with the standards? Yeah, great question. Um, so this kind of comes into play when you set your assessment up. So. Um, with all of the businesses on the call today, when you set your assessment up, there sort of there's what we call a track driver. So it is three different things. It's how many employees do you have, um, what industry are you in, and what we call what sector are you in. So Nicole was saying before for the hairdressing, unfortunately, and I agree with you, Nicole, they get lumped into the 
service with significant environmental footprint. So they're sort of getting benchmarked against, um, you know, companies who probably have a bigger environmental footprint, but because Nicole is probably smaller than say like a restaurant, you're not going to be directly compared to like a restaurant who employs like a hundred people. Um, but they do share like the same sector. So someone who, you know, a B Corp certified restaurant is going to have a very different assessment to Tom Bag. And, you know, Tom Bag probably had a quite a different assessment to Session, Sessions Hairdressing. Um, and the relievables will have a very different assessment. So it tries to, I think there's like 80 different possible assessments or something that are generated by the system. Um, but again, that's definitely something they're thinking about in the evolution of the standards at the moment as well in the future iterations of it. Okay, oh, thank you for that. Um, we don't have any other questions. We're just, we're running um, towards the end anyway. So um, uh, finally, I'd really like to thank you so much, um, each of you for joining us this afternoon. It's been really interesting, very educational and um, uh, looking forward to um, reaccreditations and also the, the development of, of um, the B Corp um, program. Um, Lauren's just popped in um, to the chat and I will also copy it and put that into the, um, uh, the email that is going to be sent out with a link to this recording for anyone who wasn't able to make it today. Um, and information, um, including the packs from Vic um, and from Lauren. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely afternoon. Um, uh, we have our next um, webinar um, up um, to um, kick off the Small Business Month next month in November. So 2nd of November, we'll actually have um, the um, COSBOA, which stands for the Council of Small Business Organisations of Australia joining us. So um, they look after like the hairdressing association, um, Nick, and um, a lot of other small uh, retail um, um, and specialist um, industries, business industries, and representatives from um, each of our partner councils to talk about support for the, our local small businesses. So thank you very much. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye all. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks everyone.